Welcome back, guys, to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. So today is Friday, and that means it's a Friday tobacco review. And today we're covering blend I've been wanting to cover for a while. That is John Cotton's number one. So before we get into it, um, currently smoking as usual two pipes today, and the other one I'm smoking, and I haven't even finished the bowl, uh, but is my uh, Peterson Irish Harp 68. And I'm smoking in the Penny Farthing by GLPs. I did a review of that before. Uh, it's been in my rotation as of for a month or so. And man, I really enjoyed it. Um, I forgot what I rated it at the time, but uh, it's one I'm really pleased with. Um, more than, I think I'm, I have a higher view of it than I did before. Um, maybe it's the same. I don't recall. But nonetheless, I've really been enjoying it. So it's been a vapor that I've, I've returned to. Um, and, and really, uh, really been enjoying quite a bit. So smoking that, um, and of course I'm right now smoking John Cotton number one, and this is a blend that I tried quite early on in my, uh, in my hob in this, you know, getting into the hobby. Um, and one of the, this is probably one of the second or third English blends I did try. Um, I went from London mixture of Dunhill, um, and then I think I tried a, uh, like a medium blend, um, and I believe that was University Professor, which I've also covered before by uh, Scotty's University Professor, which Pipes and Cigars puts out. And then I went to this, and this just caught me. Um, this was before trying Early Morning Pipe. This was before trying Chelsea Morning. Uh, so it was one of the first, or it was the first light English blends I did try. And I really fell in love with it at the time. Um, and I bought... Uh, multiple tins of it. I'm still trying it. Um, later on, I bought some more tins, and uh, this is this comes from it. So this is a 2019 tin, by the way. It does have a couple years on it. Bear that in mind. Always want to make that up front when I'm re doing reviews. If you go off and buy a tin right now, and then it's fairly fresh, you know, in the it's March 26, 2021. So if you have one that's only has a few months age you might have a different opinion on it. Bear that in mind. Uh, but nonetheless, I've been looking forward to trying or reviewing this and uh, sharing it with you guys. So uh, we're going to get into that. Uh, before we do, let me share some background with it. Now, this is a re-release, and I forgot the company. Well, it's had multiple companies, I believe, that produced it. Um, uh, this is a re-release, and it's under uh, the Scandinavian Tobacco Group. Um, Lane Limited does produce this, and I believe they produce it in Georgia. Don't quote me on that, but I believe they do. Um, and, and Russ Roulette was the one who kind of took over trying to get to the uh, to original recipe and think back on what he tried back in the 70s, I believe. So um, I think there are some of you guys out there. Um, I've read some reviews of those who compared it to the original, or probably not the original, but the, the, the former... Uh, the former blend of it and overall there it's, it's been a mix review of how similar it is some have said it's better some have said it's worse uh, but but overall the idea was to get close to the blend um, so a little bit of background on it um, give you the the description and all that good stuff uh, on the description says john cotton number one is a light virginia's Forward blend seasoned with fragrant orientals and just enough Latakia for a flavorful, flavorful experience. Um, there's a note with that along with it and says it's a light, refreshing blend made of matured and bright Virginia, uh, select small leaf oriental and Latakia. It's ideal in the morning or as an all day smoke. Um, the subtle interplay of orientals and Latakia are supported by the mellow sweetness of the Virginias. The blend has been reconstructed through research and sampling of vintage tints. Um, so if you want a traditional light light IKEA blend, give it a try. And as I mentioned, brand uh, or is is John Cotton number one, um, who um, so it's under the STG uh, company, and it's an English has Latakia Oriental Turkish Virginia as a English blend does. Uh, flavoring is none. It's a ribbon cut. 1.7 ounce tin as you can see here the european style and it is available anywhere I've, I've seen that i think you can find this just about anywhere at least on the u.s in the uh um on most of your your websites like pipes and cigars smoking pipes tobacco pipes etc etc i don't think you're gonna have a problem finding this blend normally 
Uh, and so it has a rating of 3.1 out of 22 reviews. So not a lot of reviews, but uh, a, a decent-ish um, decent uh, rating so far. Uh, mild to medium strength, no flavoring, mild to medium taste, room notes pleasant to, pleasant to tolerable, about what you find for most mild English blends. Um, and so lastly, let me show you before we get into the, the notes and character of it. Uh, let's get a look at the blend as well. Uh, so as you can see, it is looks like a light English blend. You look at the, the leaf selection there. Um, you have some of the darker, darker uh, Latakia leaf in there. Not much of it, but it's evident. It's there. Um, you have some of the more um, like a brownish uh, oriental, that kind of like golden to brown leaf. And then you have some brighter leaf of... Of some Virginia going on in there as well so um, English blends start to look like English blends um, as you can as you can tell but it is a nice cut a ribbon cut um, there are some blends and I believe I'm trying to, there was one in mind I think it's daybreak by H and H so I'm trying to think of other English blends light English blends um, daybreaks one I really didn't enjoy the cut it's just really coarse did it, does it affect the flavor or your, your experience? Probably not. But so I'm, I'm, it's a little bit of nitpicking there. I do like to cut uh, myself, so uh, there's a there's a plus on that side, if you will. Uh, so with that said, let's light it up uh, and talk about it a little bit more. I've already been smoking this a bit. I'm about maybe two thirds into the bowl. So it's one I'm familiar with. Like I said, I've tried it quite a bit uh, a time ago. And it is, as they mentioned, a Virginia forward blend. So I want to say automatically, guys, if you're a Virginia lover, um, you really haven't taken to English blends. Maybe you've tried some and you just don't really care for that Latakia uh, smokiness. The, maybe it's too heavy for you, whatever the case may be. Try this out if you haven't. Um, you, you might find a, a, a blend here that really helps kind of give you enjoyment of both worlds. Um, it's the, the Virginias are forward. Um, you're you're going to get that the, a hay um, in, a, in a sweet notes that come from Virginia. Um, hay and citrusy. Um, a little bit of tart. I didn't have a good light there. Let me relight it again. And I'm not sure if it's from the, the darker Virginia or yeah, darker Virginia or maybe Oriental, but it does have some earthiness to it. But definitely some the the hay bready notes, um, sweet sugary notes from. Um, from the bright in red Virginia so that's evident it is a Virginia forward blend um, you're gonna enjoy that if you like Virginia's but the Latakia is evident but definitely is like a third player in all of this so it's smoky um, it's it's a little bit of earthy itself um, but it's it's very minute. Uh, it's it's definitely a small player. Uh, the Orientals are the ones that really kind of hold the show with its uniqueness and 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 its uh, woodiness, uh, kind of a sweet spice. A little bit of like uh, an herb. So you try some some spices out there that are more herby. That makes sense. Um, vegetative, somewhat. Um, that that's what you're getting with the Orientals, and and so they're they're more evident definitely than the Latakia. They're they're coming up behind the Virginia. So it, it is more of a like a Virginia Oriental blend with uh, with with Latakia coming in as a uh, third player supportive role. And by the way, I am smoking this with uh, some Earl Grey tea. And I do enjoy more of the 
lighter um, English blends with with more of a oriental forward play going on. Uh, I, I enjoy those blends more with tea. I think the oriental just goes well with it usually. Um, this is one that does. So everything is mild on this, but the flavoring is uh, is definitely evident. Getting towards the medium mark, um, it's really flavorful. I, I really like that, and it's not one that I have so much anymore in my rotation. But um, sometimes I do pull it out, and um, I remember why I enjoyed it so much. Um, though it is a Virginia forward, and there's going to be a, uh, it's going to be prone to. Overheating, if you're not watching yourself, um, it's going to be one that, that heats up a little bit more. I, I do think it is mellowed out and is more of a, uh, it cooled off uh, with the with the other blend additions in there. So uh, overall, I'm going to give this, and not everyone has, I, I have seen reviews out there where they, they feel like it's a, um, you know, there's, like every blend, everyone has an issue with a blend and some people love a blend. This is one I love. Um it's for me it's around a eight out of ten maybe 8.5 and to kind of give you some comparisons maybe you're wanting something to compare it to uh, so I, I wouldn't compare this to Chelsea morning so much I feel like that is though there are light English blends um, that one just kind of stands off um, it has the Perique it has more of a Latakia presence um, it has a tariness that GLP is known for in his English blends so I, I do kind of set that aside uh, this one is the closest blend I've found that comes to Presbyterian mixture. I don't find many blends that are like Presbyterian mixture. Uh, Presbyterian mixture is a little bit unique in, in that regard, but this one has more of a Latakia presence than Presbyterian mixture, in my opinion. Um, that's a controversial issue, um, and I kind of covered maybe a bit of that in my Presbyterian mixture review, but uh, I think you pull out the uh, the Latakia presence more in this blend. Um, there's Good Morning by Cornell and Dill. There's Daybreak. I think Daybreak was a little bit more English or Latakia forward than this blend. I think Good Morning came closest to this, though I prefer this over Good Morning by Cornell and Dill. I think this is a higher quality. Um, and, and, and let me just end with that. I think this is a higher quality blend than some of your other English blends out there. Um, this is uh, This is one that is is just done it it's been um really well done and, and well made um i think it shows in that and i think it shows in other comments that are out there about it so i do recommend it uh for those of you who are virginia lovers give it a try and if you're an english lover this may be a change of pace for something lighter uh, it is an all-day blend uh, it's it's not just merely for a, a morning i think it's it has its uh, qualities to be an all-day smoke easily an all-day smoke something you can smoke back to back because the the nicotine is low enough so I recommend it give it a try um, I think you'll enjoy it I bet it will improve greatly with flavor or excuse me greatly with age um, this is two-year-old blend and I definitely can say it has improved with age um, I like to have some set aside which I do and see what how they taste in five to ten years I bet it's gonna be fabulous uh, maybe it gets to Virginia forward Possibly, and the Latakia kind of tampers a little bit down, and uh, so it may lose its English blendiness in that regard. But um, nonetheless, it's good. It's a uh, blend to try now and later. So I hope you guys are having a great week. Um, I'm gonna have another video out, kind of covering some extra things over the tobacco tournament. So be sure to subscribe. Keep up with the tournament. Um, I'm gonna cover that shortly and have another video out because I have more time today. So guys, I hope you're doing well, and we will talk to you guys Tuesday.